Today, I'm gonna to tell you how often to eat to optimally build muscle. Hey, this is Colin DeWay. If you want to master your metabolism and get in the best shape of your life, start now by subscribing and click on that bell notification so you don't miss anything. So the title of this video is how often to eat to build muscle, but what's more important is how often to eat protein. Eating protein is what elevates protein synthesis, and protein synthesis is what's going to help you build muscle. And just so you know, whether we're talking about building muscle in a building phase or retaining muscle in a cutting phase, what's optimal remains the same. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to break down what the most important things are with regards to nutrition. We're going to dig into some research to look at what might be the most optimal way to split up your protein. And then I'm going to give you my recommendations on how often you should eat your protein and how much you should eat with each sitting. But before we get into that, I think we really need to look at what's most important when it comes to nutrition and go from there. So anytime you find yourself in a situation in life where you can't be as diligent as you would like, just refer back to this list to keep yourself as in check as possible. Remember that getting good results is not about being perfect. In fact, typically, is chasing perfection that keeps people from getting where they want to be because they end up on and off all the time and just destroy their metabolisms. Anyway, when it comes to what's the most important things with nutrition, here's the exact order. Number one is adherence and sustainability to the plan. If you can't stick to whatever you're doing and you're just going to give up, it doesn't matter what you do. Then number two is total calories. Number three is your macronutrient breakdown with protein by far being the most important. Number four is your micronutrients like your vitamins and your minerals, which is why food quality does still matter. Number five is your meal timing or meal frequency and then finally the last thing is supplements now if you look at this list can you not see how so many people get this totally backwards many people don't even think about the sustainability of their diet or how well they can adhere to it nor do they have any idea how much they're actually eating the two most important things but instead what are the first things that they ask what supplements should i be taking and how often should i eat the two least important things that doesn't mean that there's no place for supplements and there are no help at all and that doesn't mean that we shouldn't look at meal timing which is going to be a huge basis of this video just know that there's they're not nearly as important as the bigger things like how much you're actually eating. And even on a day-by-day -day basis, don't sacrifice something on the top of the list for something on the bottom of the list. For instance, if your meal timing gets off, don't sacrifice your macros to try to compensate and don't sacrifice calories just to try to get macros in line. In fact, I find this is a great way for people to be more flexible, especially as calories get higher by doing something like having a calorie target and a protein target and not worrying about your exact carb and fat split. To me, the lower your calories are, the more important it is to get closer with exact macros. That way you can make sure you have a balance of everything to make sure you have enough carbs for energy and performance, but also have enough fats to aid in things like digestion and hormones. When you're in a building phase and calories are high, you're going to have sufficient amounts of both carbs and fats almost no matter what, so it doesn't matter nearly as much. Okay, with that out of the way, let's dig into some research and try to find what's the most optimal way to eat your protein. But just as a quick reminder, nothing trumps your total protein for the day. So one thing we know based on research, which by the way, I'm going to put research that I referenced in this video, every single one of them is going to be in the description below, but we know that leucine seems to be the primary amino acid responsible for muscle protein synthesis. And it also appears right around three grams of leucine is about how much that we can actually use to maximize protein synthesis in one meal. Keep in mind, different protein sources have different amounts of leucine in them. I will overlay a chart here that will show you roughly how much protein you would need to eat from different types of animal proteins to get the same amount of leucine from each one. I say animal sources because they're going to be the ones that are higher in leucine. Non-animal proteins are going to have much lower content concentrations of leucine. Now that doesn't mean someone like a vegetarian or a vegan can't build muscle. They certainly can. And there's obviously plenty of examples of people who have. It just means that it's less optimal. However, there is research that shows when you supplement a non-animal protein source like wheat with leucine, it does appear to get the same response in protein synthesis if protein and then leucine are both equated. Now this research was done in rats and people will often try to discredit that, but there seems to be a lot of similarities between rats and mice with things like metabolism and things like that. But anyways, with this, my suggestion to you, if you're someone who is either vegan, vegetarian, or just doesn't like to eat a lot of meat, supplement your protein containing meals with leucine or BCAAs and you should be good. But anyway, all this to basically say that you can only get so much anabolism from one meal of protein, which by the way, if you don't know anabolism or anabolic, simplified for this video basically means building muscle. So say for instance, 40 grams of protein is what gave you three grams of leucine in that meal. That doesn't mean that eating 60 grams of protein in that meal would give you a better response because you've maxed out that anabolic response from that meal. So a lot of people will look at this and 
and say, well, if you can only get so much response in one meal, then that's why you should eat a lot of small meals so you can stimulate protein synthesis many times throughout the day. Which in theory would make sense, but keep watching because I'm gonna look at some research that will show that this might not be the best way to do things. There was a study done in humans where they were infusing amino acids in them continuously for six hours straight. So when you hear just being infused with amino acids, you would think, well, they're gonna be super anabolic, right? Like they just keep getting the amino acids. But what they actually found was in the first 30 to 60 minutes, there was a huge increase in protein synthesis and it even continued to elevate more between hours one and two. But then after two hours, it basically dropped back down to near baseline levels and stayed there for the remainder of those six hours. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that there seems to be like a refractory period with protein and we can't elevate it all the time. So to me, if you can't elevate it again and you're eating every couple of hours to try to spike protein synthesis, if protein is equated, you're actually using more protein to not get the anabolic response because protein synthesis will not elevate from that meal. Basically, you're getting less bang for your buck for your protein. So to me, if there's a period of time where you're probably not gonna be able to elevate protein synthesis again, it would make more sense to eat more protein less frequently than to eat less protein more frequently. So with that, I wanna give you my personal recommendations for meal frequency. To me, you wanna be eating a minimum of three meals per day, but I would say that four or five meals per day would be more optimal. And then you're gonna to wanna to space out those meals every four to five hours or so, no less than three hours apart, but probably not much more than about six hours apart either. And if at all possible, it's best to keep that spacing the same and fit your workout in between those windows. As far as how much protein to eat with each meal, remember that I recommend eating about one gram per pound of body weight. So what would probably be a good strategy is to take that total number of protein that's for you and then spread it out evenly between each of your meals. But most should aim for about 25 to 40 grams of protein at each meal to make sure you're maxing out that response in protein synthesis. If you weigh more, you're gonna to wanna to stay towards the higher end of that spectrum. And if you weigh less, you're gonna be on the lower end of the spectrum. Right now with my show coming up, I opt for four meals per day. I like to eat one time upon awaking, and then my lunch is basically my pre-workout, my dinner is my post-workout, and then I eat again before bed. All spaced out about four to five hours apart. Now, if you're wondering about carbohydrate timing, you must have missed the video that I did on it. So make sure you check out that video here. In between that video and this video, you're gonna be on your way to some fantastic results. Any questions about meal timing, leave them in the comments below. And if you're new here, consider subscribing, and I will see you over at that other video.